Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Today is Friday the 8th. Man, we're, <laughs> this year is going by really fast. And I want to say amen to that. <clears throat> After Jesus had finished, we're in John the 18th chapter, verse 1. And I'll just wait till you get there. The deal is that I want you to subscribe, like, comment, share uh, the videos on, on my YouTube channel my podcast and here on Facebook, um, we want to be able to reach as many people as possible with this ministry. You can contact me, Tom and Sarah at Outlook.com. All right. Wow, look at this. We're in John the 18th chapter. Um, <clears throat> we're going to talk about, we're going to start doing this. Jesus just finishes praying, talking to the Father. All right. So after Jesus finished this prayer, he left with his disciples and came across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden. All right, with, with these disciples, they go to the Kidron Valley, which is uh, the path that David took when he uh, was first forced to flee Jerusalem because of the betrayal of Absalom, his son. So isn't this ironic that he goes to the same garden and uh, it's after Judas of Carioth, Judas Iscariot, uh, had just gone to, um, to betray Jesus. All right. <clears throat> he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. Now, Gethsemane means olive press. Okay. Do you remember in Judges chapter 6, Gideon is at a, uh, a press, okay, for olives, for, for grapes, whatever, and it's used to crush those things, all right, and uh, and and get the oil out. That's what uh, that's what he's doing. So here it is. Um, Jesus not only went there to pray, but he went there to be captured. Okay, he went there a lot. Otherwise, Judas wouldn't have been able to find him when he came back. Now, God, now Jesus knew full well the plan. He knew already what was going to take place. He knew the pain that he was going to experience. The deal is Adam fell in a garden of paradise. All right. Jesus stood faithfully in a garden of of betrayal. Now, I just wonder how many people are listening that have ever been betrayed in their life? I mean, I have. Um, I, you know, it, it, I'd be hard pressed to think that uh, you haven't. You know, it's, it's a thing that we all get betrayed. We all are betrayed at some point in our life by someone that we've poured into or that is really, really close to us. I was betrayed uh, by somebody uh, one of the times, I mean, many times I was, um, a gentleman wanted to kill me. I was in Iwako, Washington, uh, Long Beach, Washington area, going to the, the lighthouse at Cape Disappointment. And, um, <clears throat> and we were going up there and he wanted to take me into the forest. And I, you know, I was like, felt this check in my spirit and I said, no, I'm going to go pick up my kids from school. But he wanted, he was, he was insisting that we go. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to go. I'll take you there, but I'm not going to go. And then we get there and he goes, come on. So I, I took him up there and, and he goes, come on, let's go. And I said, no, no, no. He was going to kill me. God warned me in advance. He was a guy that came to my church. Now, Judas the traitor, verse 2, knew where this place was, for Jesus had gone there often with his disciples. The Pharisees and the leading priests had given Judas a large detachment or um, a large um, uh, group, company of soldiers, okay? Um, uh, it was a large in numbers, about five to 600 men. Now, why would they use that many people to go and arrest Jesus. I mean, like, it's, it's crazy. And the temple police uh, and uh, to seize Jesus. Now, Judas guided them to the garden, all of them carrying torches and lanterns and armed with swords and spears. 
the, the, those were foot soldier weapons. Now, Jesus knew full well what was about to happen, and he went into the garden entrance to meet them. Stepping forward, he said, who are you looking for? <clears throat> Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. Now, Judas, the traitor, was among them. And he replied, well, I'm the guy. <laughs> I am he. Now, here again, he uses the term for God. I am he. And the moment Jesus spoke those words, I am he, the mob fell backward to the ground. Wow. Once more, Jesus asked them, well, who are you looking for? And they stood up. They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. And he says, I told you, I'm the one you're looking for. So if you want me, let these men go home. They were the 11 other disciples that were there. Now, he doesn't get into a whole lot like Luke did uh, about the garden. You know, but just remember, everybody came. Uh, all the disciples came to the garden and he said, stay here and pray. Um, and then he brings James, John and Peter. And he says, pray with me for one hour. And he comes back to our sleep. He does that three times. Remember, sweats, drops of blood. And then the group comes. <clears throat> so once more, Jesus asked them, who are you looking for? And they told him, Jesus of Nazareth. He replied, I told you that I am the one you're looking for. So if you want me, let these men go home. He said this to fulfill the prophecy he had spoken. Father, not one of those whom you have given me was lost. That's in John 6 and um, uh, John seventeen twelve. Now, this is incredible. Jesus spoke his name to these people. And they were so taken back that they fell backwards. And I have been under the heavy presence of the Lord many, many times in my life where I couldn't stand. I mean, usually to me, it's like this uh, weight that comes on my, this weight of his glory that comes down on my back and I, and, and I bow forward or I'll lie down. Um, I've only fallen backwards a couple of times. But these people, when God reveals himself, his presence is so overwhelming that, the peop that, that, that your earthly flesh cannot, cannot stand it. Now, my brother posted a thing. Um, it was either today or yesterday. I don't remember. But he said that we are, we are spirits who habit, inhabit a fleshly body. We're skeletons wrapped around flesh. That flesh is wrapping around us. Okay. Jesus comes and makes our spirit alive in him. And then these are just temporary temples. Now we get them in heaven. Don't get me wrong. We still get them in heaven. You're going to know each other. You're not going to be married or given in marriage in heaven, but you're going to know each other. I told you that I am the one you're looking for. And he said this to fulfill that prophecy. Verse 10, suddenly Peter took out his sword and struck the high priest servant, slashing off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Malchus means king. Jesus ordered Peter, put away your sword. Don't you think that, I'll, uh, that I will avoid the suffering? Do you really think I will avoid the suffering which my father has assigned for me? Don't you know that I'm going to drink this cup? Now, <clears throat> in Luke, I think it's Luke or Mark, <clears throat> It talks about Jesus picked up the ear and put it back on. He did that to save Peter's life. Because he cut off the right ear and he would have been guilty of a crime. Well, there would be no evidence now because the guy's ear was fine. But even then, don't you, isn't it cool that Jesus even then, one of his captors, 
He heals him, and yet they still want to kill him? Put your sword away. Do you really think I will avoid the suffering which my father has? A son? Don't you think I'm going to drink this cup assigned to me by the father? Now, I want to make very clear, this is not the Audi sign. The Audi sign has the, has the circles a little wider apart, so don't get all offended. Verse 12, then the soldiers and their captain, along with the Jewish officers, seized Jesus and tied him up. And they took him first to Annas. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Now, John is the only one who records this pre-trial meeting with Annas. He was the retired and therefore illegal high priest. So this is the first of the illegalities that happened. The priesthood here, this is interesting, but the priesthood here um, was was so corrupt in this time of Jesus that it was improper for two men to hold the position of high priest at the same time. But they, Annas and Caiaphas, were called high priest at the time. This is wrong to do. You're not allowed to do this. But they did it. They broke the law. And yet they accused Jesus of breaking the law. Caiaphas earlier, um, <clears throat> it was in John 11, Caiaphas earlier said, uh, prophesied actually that it was necessary for one uh, to die for the sake of the whole people. Caiaphas was the one, verse 14, who had persuaded the Jewish leaders that it would be better off that one person die for the sake of the people. We're going to get uh, into this a little bit more, but um, I, want to, I want you to understand something in this process. I want you to understand what's happening here. Jesus went to the garden not to be captured. He went to the garden to pray. He knew he was going to be captured there in this garden of betrayal. The same way David was betrayed is the same way Jesus is betrayed. Absalom betrayed uh, David. Judas betrays Jesus. I want to go back to Malchus for a second. Malchus meaning king. Jesus reveals himself as healer to Malchus. I just, I just almost can, 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 Imagine Jesus doing this. He's like grabbing the ear, whether it falls on the ground or if it's just hanging off. Reaching, he picks Malchus up, puts his ear back on, and both of his ears are healed. Malchus had to believe. Something supernatural happened to him. He had to have believed. I mean, it's hard to think he wouldn't. I remember this story of, from Azusa Street. Uh, uh, in Azusa Street, um, this woman comes in uh, to the, uh, to the it, it was a horse um, barn kind of thing that they built. And so this woman comes in, um, they, they fixed it up to be a church. They had, they had planks and, and peach boxes and stuff like that in order to make pews. Well, this woman comes in screaming and her, she, she has a, a cloth wrap around her head and uh, she had gotten into a fight with her husband's mistress. 
And, um, <clears throat> and this, this mistress pulls off this woman's ear. She's f screaming in pain. She comes walking in. And this woman, young gal, um, she uh, doesn't know what else to do, I guess. But she takes off the wrap, puts her hand on it. And like almost instantly, the, the, the ear is restored. I would flip out by that. <laughs> All of a sudden, there's an ear restored. Jesus repeats this miracle. He knew that the trial was going to be illegal. He knew that Annas was illegally the high priest that year. Can't have two at the same time. Jesus was very well aware of the situation at hand. He wasn't in any stretch of the imagination. He was not um, hindered by this fact that he was going to die for the nation. Now, this whole slashing off of the right ear, I want to talk about it. It goes... This is a vivid picture of what happens when we act impetuously or in anger. We hinder people's ability to hear our message. In other words, we cut off their ear from hearing the whole gospel. When we walk in angry offense toward others. When we, when we commit road rage. When we yell at the, at the customer service person at the store. when we get into a heated argument with somebody. <clears throat> we need to not do this. Imagine you're yelling at somebody and then you try to witness to them or share the gospel with them. It just doesn't work. Yield your rights. Give them to Jesus. And I'm not saying, you know, you, you, you don't have to speak up. What I'm saying is do it in the right spirit. Speaking the truth. How did Jesus, how, how is it said? Paul says it. Speak the truth with agape, with love, seeking their benefit. Without any thought of having something returned to you. Seek their highest good with the truth that you speak. Speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up, be mature in all aspects of him who is the head, Christ Jesus. Now, I want to remind you, I have two books for sale. One of them is called SOS, A 50-Day Journey into the Heart of God. Another one is uh, is from Breakdown to Breakthrough, My Journey to Soul Health. Both of them are on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, Walmart.com. You can get them there and, and go ahead and order those books. That's a way that you can help uh, this ministry. If you want to donate, Tom and Sarah at, uh, at, at gmail. Uh, sorry. If you want to help out, yeah, I have Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, Tom and Sarah at Outlook.com. I opened up this new um, uh, web, uh, this new email address. It's easier than Tom and Sarah Ministries. But Tom and Sarah at Outlook.com. You can get both of those books from me for twenty dollars, which includes shipping. That's a way to help out this ministry. Um, we're looking for monthly donors. I'm, I'm trying to gain. $400 per month uh, for the help of this ministry. I'm going to school next year uh, at Bethel, Bethel, the Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry. I need to grow. We all need to grow. I want to get as much of God as I can to give out. It's $5,600 for the school, and it's another fourteen dollars for the mission trip that I want to go on. So... 
I already have $140 in that, so I need just $140 less. Fifty-four sixty is what I need for the school. Fourteen hundred for the mission trip. If you want to help out, Tom and Sarah at Outlook.com. I'll get you the link that you can uh, give into that. I have Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, Zelle, all those. Okay. Subscribe, like, comment, um, share my YouTube channel, uh, my podcasting, my, my podcast channel. Uh, like and share and comment on these videos. And, um, you know, I'm not adverse to making mistakes. This is really awesome. But, you know, I like to correct them too. But I like to have interaction as well. So feel free to like, comment, and share on these videos as well on Facebook. Tom and Sarah Ministries is the Facebook page. I'm starting to build that back up again. A lot of things I put off to the side for uh, for the time that I was trying to, um, I, was, I was up in Alaska and I was just busy. But now it's time to redo these things. So you're talking five or six hundred soldiers coming to get Jesus for back in John 18. Just picture this scene if you would. Okay, Jesus is praying. He's about 100 yards from uh, Jacob or James, Peter and John. About another 100 yards from the other, uh, not, other eight disciples. Matthew, Nathaniel, all those guys, Philip. And he's praying. Father, let this cup pass for me, but, but not what my will is, but what your will is. Now, I'm not saying that Jesus wasn't physically stressed out by it, but I believe that Jesus already knew what he was going to experience. Remember, he was all God and all man at the same time. I believe, too, that Jesus loved uh, ministering to people. I think, I just believe that he did. He just had a blast with it. I mean, who wouldn't? I, I get a kick out of ministering to people, seeing them healed, seeing them set free and, and delivered. I'm sure Jesus did too. And he wanted to keep doing it. And I asked him one time, I said, Lord, what, you know, why did you say, take the cup away from me? And and he said, I really didn't want to go. I mean, I'm not saying that's all that it was. I mean, he had to do the sacrifice for us. He had to pay the, to pay the cost for it. But I said, Lord, what, what, what was the prayer? He goes, I didn't want to go. I had to pay for the sins, but I didn't want to leave earth. I liked doing it. But he said, if I didn't go, then you couldn't have this much fun because the Holy Spirit wouldn't be given. It's powerful. It's powerful. We get to do the stuff that Jesus did and greater, according to John 14, because he left. But he didn't leave us alone. He didn't leave us orphaned. God loves you, man. And all you got to do is just surrender your life to him. <clears throat> Remember, the Jews thought Jesus was coming. The Messiah was going to come and set them free from Rome. And here the Jews are using the Romans to take care of Jesus for them. Caiaphas said it right. It was necessary for one person to die. It was necessary for one person to die on behalf of an entire nation. That's in John 11 verses 49 through 51. It's necessary. He had to die for everybody. Just how it goes. All right, well, that's it for today. I want to thank you for joining me. Um, 
I believe this, that God is about ready to pour out his Holy Spirit like never before. And we get to be a part of that. I love the, <clears throat> I love the crucifixion because without the cross, we could never get to the empty tomb. And I want to be so close to Jesus. He says that we may know him. The power of his resurrection, yes, and but the fellowship of his sufferings, plural. What were his sufferings? His sufferings include. His sufferings include betrayal. Denial. We all get to be a part of that. Well, anyway, that's it for today. God bless you. Have a great day. Uh, one thing that I'm really, really super excited about is the Bible app, praise God, Passion Translation. They've got up to date right now through Ezekiel and Daniel. Uh, they have Genesis, um, Joshua, Judges, Ruth uh, are part of it. Is it. Like I said, Ezekiel, Daniel, Isaiah. Uh, they are in the Bible app now, and I'm just really super excited about it. All right. <clears throat> Praise God. Um, yeah, so we'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a great day.